right so here we are welcome today is uh wednesday the 15th of september 2021 my name is rob payne and this is com at home So welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, I hope this will encourage you uh, and further you as you move forward with Jesus. Now, social media, I say that in some of your faces. Mm, yeah, social media is an interesting thing, isn't it? Um, anyone and everyone has something to say. A bit like a marketplace or the temple courts of Jesus Day where people would stand up and speak to share their thoughts and views um, to their to try and maybe convince people that they were right. As believers, we need to be careful not to get caught up in the arguments and conspiracies of the world. You know, it can be very, very easy to become a keyboard warrior. Now, we need to become and need to be about the Father's business and maybe filter out some of those things that can distract us from it. As Paul was writing to Timothy, uh, he was in chains in prison. Now, some had abandoned him because of it. Uh, and as the shame associated maybe with someone who is now regarded as a criminal was too much, even though he was in prison for the gospel, sharing the truth about Jesus, which with others um, had now started, they started to water that down because of it. So Paul instructs Timothy to guard the good deposit that was entrusted to him with the help of the Holy Spirit. Now he continues to instruct Timothy with these words from 2 Timothy 2, 1-4. And it says, you then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join me in my suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled with civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Any good soldier that is in service should be concerned about his work as a soldier with no care for the things that do not concern him or his position as a soldier. If a soldier starts to get entangled in the things that are not part of what he or she has been commanded to do, they take the right off the ball. And this could put theirs and other people's lives in danger. So Paul was saying to Timothy, focus on the job at hand, the preaching of the gospel of Jesus which is of eternal purpose. Don't get caught up with the things of this world which are temporary. We, as the church, have been given a great purpose and mission. And like a good soldier, should obey the, and follow the mission to please our commanding officer, Jesus. The mission to make disciples, preach the gospel, love God, our neighbour and each other should be what we are all about, not worldly concerns. And this is the job of everyone. This is all our job, not just pastors, not evangelists, but as the 19th century Prince of Preachers, Charles Spurgeon, beseeched his parishioners, he said it's the whole job of the whole church to preach the whole gospel to the whole world. There are too many Christians arguing about um, you know, being an activist or in civilian affairs, which causes confusion for the world and disunity amongst believers. The importance of the gospel should be foremost in our minds and our purpose. We want to avoid quarrelling and disunity over things that are may seem wise in the world's eyes, things of civilian affairs. Now, not that we shouldn't have an opinion or that, you know, in things or, or you know, we don't have the right to decide what's right for us or best for our families or the people of God. But as Paul decided when he announced in 1 Corinthians that since the world in all its fancy wisdom never had a clue when it came to knowing God, God in his wisdom took delight in using that, that what the world considered stupid, preaching of all things, to bring those who trust him into the way of salvation. That's for the message. I love that. You know, the things of the world that they thought were so smart, actually God used something that may be well, the world things daft. So in other words, Paul came to the conclusion to only preach Christ crucified as the main purpose 
of what he and other believe, believers should be about, and even known for, regardless if they, you know, they were called a fool in doing so. So in our preaching the gospel, we must bring glory to Jesus in bearing with one another, being united in our mission for the gospel. So in closing in this part of the message today, let these words of Paul to the church of Ephesus encourage you in your calling to be the body of people united in one cause for the gospel, for the glory of the one God and saviour. And these, and these words come from Ephesians 4, 1 to 5. And it says, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all. So as we come to take communion now, make sure you've got your emblems. Have you got your communion bits with you? That's the important bit here. If you haven't, this is a moment to grab them. So you need some wine or some squash or juice uh, and, and some bread. So we've got ours here. And so as we come to the communion table, let us consider the body of Christ, each other, as we consider the body of Christ that was crucified for us. He, as the Prince of Peace, brought peace to us through the sacrifice on the cross. He restored the broken relationship between humanity and its creator. We now have peace with God through him and him alone. This is our message. This is our security. He commanded us to love one another as he loved us, sacrificially, without ego or selfishness, for the purpose of God, not for the views of man. So the, I'm going to share this scripture. It's fairly well known. You've heard it before in 1 Corinthians 10, 16 to 17. And it says, is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ. Because there is one loaf. We who are many are one body, for we shall share the one loaf. So tonight as we drink the wine, we participate in that sacrifice. We should die to self, our own desires and worldview. And we are united in his body when we eat the bread. One body, one loaf, one God, one commission in which we obey our com one commanding officer, Jesus. So if you get your bread ready, let's take our bread. We're going to hand the bread out. Take the bread. And we just want to break it and give thanks for it. So Lord, we just thank you. Thank you that you have made us one body of people, united for one cause, that you have brought us together and that you bind us together through the spirit and the bond of peace. Holy Spirit, move through us as a body of people for the gospel to shine your light into this world. And that we remember the sacrifice it cost and the message that we bring in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's take the bread together. And then the wine. As we think about the sacrifice of Jesus and the blood that was shed for our own forgiveness, let it remind us that we should forgive one another, that we should forgive others. And that forgiveness is actually something far more powerful than we could ever think. So let's take the wine and remember Jesus and the sacrifice he made for the gospel. Mm. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for that wine. We thank you, God, that you have done it all. You did it all on the cross for us. The blood that was shed. Or that when you said those words, it is finished. We stand in that tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are, um, I want to close with a, a, a blessing. Just close this part with a blessing um, before we say farewell. Um, and let this encourage you. Let these words 
encourage you and, and, and fill you with, with peace and hope. He says, may you live a life worthy of the calling you have received. May the sacrifice of the Saviour make you completely humble and gentle and patient as we bear with one another in love. May the fruit of the Spirit grow in your life as you make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. And may the love of the Father, the peace of Christ and the power of the Spirit strengthen you for the mission of the gospel and keep you focused on the job at hand. Like a good soldier, not wavering or being distracted by the things outside of the mission set before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Why don't you just worship with me today, wherever you are. I get to call on him today, yeah. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we gather together to lift up your name. To call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering. As your saints fall down, as your people sing, we will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will see them. Our God saves. Our God saves. There is hope in your name. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit.
Set our hearts on fire for you. 